and welcome to another Frivolous webisode. Today is part two of, I don't know what I'm going to call it, maybe highlights and lowlights of the past six months. Skincare edition. That's, that's, that fits in the thumbnail beautifully, doesn't it? No. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to talk about products that I've used throughout the past six months in terms of skincare that I've enjoyed enough to make just a video about them and a couple of disappointments also. Just one. No. Three. <laughs> Three disappointments. Uh, I usually talk about all my skincare that I use in my empties because I, I try to use up all my skincare and make a video on it so that you can have my thorough opinion. But these products have been impressing me so much, most of them. <laughs> I have such steady opinions on them. That's what I mean. And um, I miss making skincare videos sometimes, so let's talk about it. Now, the first product is a sunscreen, and if you know me, you know I love sunscreens and cleansers, favorite things to try. And this one, if you take nothing else from this video, there's a couple of products here that I wish you could think about and you take notes on your mental notebook, and this is one of them. This is the Everyday One by Hello Sunday. It's an SPF of 50. It is a light fluid that feels a bit denser or creamier when applying to the skin. Um, it goes completely clear. There it is. And as soon as you start to blend it, sorry, this is from the previous video. As soon as you start to blend it, it just disappears. So it goes fully transparent, very dark skin friendly, and it has the most gorgeous sheen on the skin. If you know me, I have combination to oily skin, but I don't mind some luminous finishes. I don't mind some dew, especially on the colder months and drier months when it gets to, you know, hot and heavy summer. I, I tone it down. And that's what I've been doing. I've been using this. I bought this late spring and I've used it up until a couple of weeks ago when it started, it started to get boiling hot in here. <clears throat> But anyway, up until then, this was the one that I was grabbing every single day. It's a delightful sunscreen. And once it sets, you should let all your sunscreens set uh, just because uh, they form a film that takes a bit to set down and be a completely even layer on your skin. And if you start to touch your sunscreen, apply foundation or anything else on top of your sunscreen before it sets. You may create some ruptures in that film and the UV rays will go through it. But once it sets, it creates the most beautiful glowy finish on the skin that on their skin makes it look super juicy and glowy and healthy. And then on with some makeup on top, it just makes the best, best makeup primer for a luminous finish. I'm going to say people with dry skin will go, would go bonkers for this one. People with combination to oily skin, I'd say if you like a little bit of dew, this is fantastic. In terms of finish and to, to the touch, it doesn't feel greasy, oily, slippery or tacky. It just feels like you have moisturized skin. But all in all, it feels absolutely amazing. The only thing is, and I've learned this the hard way, is that you really have to let it set before you go in with your makeup, which is a good thing, because if you go before it sets, it will start to peel and it will scare you and think that this won't work for you. But if you let it set, it goes perfectly on top of other skincare and perfectly under makeup. Just make sure that you kind of do more tapping motions than rubbing motions which makes sense because any sunscreen rubs off if you rub it. Now, disappointing sunscreens and unlike the Hello Sunday, which is, I say mid-range, it's not the most inexpensive one. For me, my favorite inexpensive sunscreen is the Garnier one, uh, the one in the small bottle for the face. Uh, this is kind of mid-range, around 20 euros. Now, these are stupid expensive. Um, especially when the buy, you buy them full size. And these were both a huge disappointment to me. I have the Ultraviolet uh, Clean Screen Fragrance Free Gel, which is an SPF of 30. There you go, the mini. And it's a really nice uh, twist out kind of lid. 
cap, which is dirty, but friends, such as life, no longer, no longer dirty. And this is the Ultraviolet Lean Screen Mineral Mat Mattifying Fragrance Free. Again, same sort of thing. Now, let's start with the Lean Screen uh, Mattifying one. This is, let me see if I have something left to show you. This is a thicker sunscreen and it has a bit of a tint, which is nice. It, I think this will still look weird on darker skins. On me, I can massage it in until it disappears. I don't know how it will work in terms of leaving a cast on um, darker skins. But as you can see on my skin, if you massage it in a bit, it kind of disappears. This on me feels thick and pasty. And it stays feeling like that. It's a bit too heavy for me. Again, it's fragrance free. It's fine. But um, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. Like most mineral sunscreens, and I have a problem with most mineral sunscreens, they make me itch. I'm sensitive to mineral sunscreens. And this, this was an exception in that term, in that sense. But um, it just stays feeling sticky and grubby on the skin. Didn't like it. And this one, which is the gel. Let's call it the gel. <laughs> Let me show you the color of it. It's again a thicker texture, but it's a gel. It's fine. It feels thinner to the, to the touch. But then here it is. It has a strong cast. Um, it does a gorgeous effect. It makes it, it has a gorgeous effect on the skin because it kind of evens it out in a beautiful way. Problem is, um, it starts to dry down to the point where if I'm not in direct heat and sweating, if I'm in an AC acclimatized room, my skin feels dry which is unheard of. It's me. Uh, so yeah, and I don't know. So here it is after setting a bit. I don't know how this will look on darker skins. That's the first thing because it has that kind of tint to it that stays on the skin. I have to go in with makeup on top of it because on itself it looks too light on me, but the skin looks even. It's really weird. It, if they could make a foundation range, of this with 40 shades, this may be really good for extremely oily skin. I personally didn't enjoy the kind of tightening feeling that this gave me. People with very oily skin may love it. And the same for the mineral sunscreen. If you have very dry skin, maybe you like this pasty feeling. I don't know. Ah, not worth it for me. Now, one that is more than worth it for me, they've done it again. Let's talk about cleansers. Let's talk about the Geek & Gorgeous Mighty Melt Cleanser. This, my friends, is a gorgeous product. Again, I'm so happy I got to try it. I bought it myself, of course. Uh, but this is, let me lower the ISO here so that you can see it better. It's very similar to the Hamish All Clean Balm Vanilla Clow. Vanilla Co. Clean It Zero, same kind of texture, and it's just beautiful. It, it's of no frills, affordable balm cleanser that is dignified. You know what I mean? You use it, you do, you're not sad that you got a cheap one that you're missing out in any way. It's just amazing. It gets the job done. It melts your makeup so easily. It rinses off clean, but without feeling drying or without leaving any kind of film on your skin. It's super easy to use and it's very affordable. This is, I have to say, my favorite affordable cleanser that I've tried. I like the one from SVR, which I mentioned in my empties, but that one I have an issue with the texture not being stable. So when it's hot, and even for me, it was all the time very liquidy, and the smell of coconuts. Those are the drawbacks for me. That's really affordable. It's a very good one. It works really well. But if I have to choose, this is the one that I'd go for. Uh, sadly, 
uh, More Than Beauty store, which is a store here in Portugal uh, that I'm affiliated with and I have a discount code for you. They don't, they can't sell Geek and Gorgeous anymore. I, but, <laughs> but you can still get it. It's, it's, it's from Europe, so it's fine. There's no customs, no problem, and they're very quick on the shipping department. So this is a great product. Couldn't recommend it more. And between this and my higher end Polis Choice uh, cleanser, I'm having a tough time picking out new cleansers to try. So leave me some tips down below of cleansers you think I would fall in love with or that you're curious about that are sold, sold in Europe. Please, please, no customs. And that includes most of the UK stuff, except for the major look fantastic, feel unique kind of resellers, everything else has customs and we're not going, we're not going to go through that. We're not, we're not. Next up, this one was sent to me by a store called Sweet Care. They're here from Portugal, but they ship internationally. And I have a code with them. It's Gift Solange in case you want to buy something from them. It gives you a few samples if you buy it from them. So uh, maybe you're interested in that. And they have mostly French pharmacy brands and stuff like that, but they have loads. It's a huge store with lots of brands. Check it, check them out if you want. But once in a while, a couple of times a, week, a year, they send me a few products for me to try. The only thing they ask from me is a review. Not a positive review, a review. And here it comes. I really liked this one. This is the Eucerin Hyaluron Filler Plus Elasticity 3D Serum. This one, the golden one. Now this delivers hydration as you may have guessed from the Hyaluron, but they also have included a patented um, kind of compound, I'd say, ingredient, I don't know, uh, that is good for targeting dark spots, and it's called thiamidiol, I think. I think, don't quote me on that. And this is one of their kind of, this kind of serum. I had already tried one from them that really pilled on me. This one, doesn't actually, which is really nice. I'm applying this on top of my skincare, so of, of the sunscreen, so sorry. It gives a bit of a dewiness to the skin, but it's temporary, it sets. Don't rub it too much or it will pill, but if you don't rub it a lot, it's it layers fine with other skincare and the sunscreens, and it's a really beautiful fluidy serum. It's kind of a creamy fluid, again, it's richer, I use this in the cold time up till late spring and then I stopped because it became a bit too heavy for me. I usually lay this on top of another antioxidant serum and I really enjoy this. The only drawback with Eucerin products is the excessive fragrance. Very flowery fragrance. Some people love it and it's nice but I would prefer it not to have a fragrance. Now, a product that I did not like and it came with this one. It's the day cream from the same range. It's the Hyaluron Filler plus Elasticity. It's the day cream. I don't think this has SPF, but maybe it does. I could have sworn it did. Let me see. Why doesn't it say on the bottle it should? SPF 15, yes, it does have. I'm using <laughs> magnifying glass from my iPhone. Yes, I'm blind. Uh, anyway, this pills on me a lot immediately, regardless if I'm applying this on bare skin, on top of other products, it doesn't matter. As soon as I apply this, this has the most luxurious feeling uh, in terms of a moisturizer. It's delightful to apply, but then it pills. Uh, it's just as soon as I touch my skin, I do this and some pills are cut. pills some pilling things are coming off. My mother likes this cream, it doesn't pill on her, so it has to do with your skin type, I guess, your skin chemistry. Basically, if something doesn't pill on me, it will probably not pill in most people because lots of things pill on me that don't pill on others, if that makes sense. This does pill on me. Again, it has that strong flowery fragrance that I'm not the biggest fan of. As I said, my, my mother really likes it. For me, there's another downside, which is the SPF 15. It only makes it 
um, so that I can use it in the winter time when it's completely cloudy and rainy. It's, there's not going to be any sunshine out there. That's the only time when I can use this. That's the other drawback. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it pills. So for me, it doesn't work. Now, let's close this video with lots of love for Skin Tegra. You know, you know, I love, for me, Skin Tegra does the best moisturizers on the market if you like a creamy cream. If you're into gel creams and stuff like that, there are other brands. If you like a creamy cream, Skin Tegra is for you. Now, let's start with Sphinx. It's the eye cream. The only thing I don't like is the bulky packaging. Uh, but this is Sphinx. This is the eye cream, and it's rich enough so that I can feel my under eye moisturize because I have wrinkles and stuff like that. This has, as far as I remember, a peptide complex, which I really like. And I like to lather this on my eyes uh, at night and also apply a bit of this on my eyes in the daytime. And I've been really enjoying this. It has a bit of a chemically smell, I'd say, um, but it just fades really quickly. So I don't mind it at all. It's not a perfume, I think. It's just the ingredients. But yeah, I really like this for the eyes. It's just really nourishing, which I need, but it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't disturb my makeup. And I can layer it on in the evening without fearing milia or anything. So I've been really liking this one. And then the other one, I shouldn't have bought this one because I have, I'll put the name on the screen. I don't remember. It's the pink one, which I use post laser treatments. And I love that cream. But I had some people who have combination to oily skin saying that feels a bit too heavy on my skin but you should try the Sika cream and I'm kind of like I don't need any more moisturizers uh, I shouldn't be but I did <laughs> I did get this this is the Sika cream by um, Skin Tegra also and it's a delightful moisturizer and I see what people say when they say yeah uh, the other one feels a bit a bit heavier in time in terms of let's use the words it feels greasier on the skin but it's not greasy in a bad sense it feels really nourishing and cushioning but it stays feeling you know like there's something on your skin and this one although it has the exact same kind of feeling when you apply it to your skin it just sets down and it feels like it's being absorbed by the skin by the skin by the skin really quickly um, and it's just, it's gorgeous. It doesn't have lots of dew to it. You know, it kind of, it's more oily skin friendly. And if you're looking for something that is calming and soothing, this has the Sika complex. And I absolutely adore this. Again, this is something I purchased, I purchased early spring. So now I can't, I don't use it as often, maybe a couple of times a week when I'm doing my acids in the uh, evening but I really I have really been enjoying this one so yeah that's it for all my skincare reviews I hope you have enjoyed this video if you have experiences with these products let me know in the comments below because we're all different so it's all relevant information and if you want me to try something specific also leave it in the comments as usual if you've enjoyed the video like subscribe if you want to see more from me and as always thank you for spending your precious time on me and I'll see you on my next video bye